Good morning, folks. This video will be linked below. Apparently, seismic researchers have pegged the process by which L waves from large quakes create smaller ones in strange places. Imagine if photons or the natural vibration of the world was your energy source. Well, that's real. The Midwest has gone hot and cold and hot and cold. The fruit is beginning to suffer for it. Eight dead in Japan from severe weather. An explosion in Vietnam. That's the second one this year at the petrochemical plant. There was an avalanche in Nepal due to way too much precipitation. The Atlantic Ridge was trembling yesterday where it meets the faults from the Caribbean. And quake swarms in Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands picked up after a small spell of inactivity as well. Yellow and the orange here are the solar wind speed and density. You can see them jumping periodically. Up top, the red, the BZ, has been tipping south in reaction to it. You can see the charged particle bombardment in the auroral electrojet visible here on the Ovation Prime getting stronger this morning. The induction magnetometer is showing the normal enduring 2 hertz resonance, but intermittent short-lived wide-range spikes have me a bit taken aback. Having a look at the sun, you can see a few little ejections, but the main feature is that coronal hole, the tall dark region turning at us now. Should be one heck of a coronal hole stream in a few days. You might know we had a flurry of M flares yesterday, all from this new active region 11476. Now NOAA reports daily at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and last night they had it as beta. That's not the case this morning. Looking at this Zurich Class F region, meaning it is big and complex, you can see the red and the blue unmitigatedly strewn about the region with no pattern or way to separate the polar regions. This is beta gamma, and the little spot in the middle may even be a delta spot. More flares are coming. Goodbye supermoon, hello Jupiter conjunction. You won't be able to see this show, but Jupiter will line up with the sun on May 13th. And as you see her and Mercury conjoin after that, the moon sneaks in to stroll past all three of them, ending celestial social hour with a solar eclipse that will be visible for a lot of us. Last but not least, folks, I wanted to update you on the F1 layer critical frequencies. That's the strongest frequency wave that can be skipped off of that layer of the ionosphere, but it also serves as kind of a registry of Earth's ionization below the magnetosphere and F2 layer. Now this is what it should look like. This is 1998-1999. It should go up in the summer, and because this is Gakona, Alaska, there should be almost nothing at the winter, the beginning and end of the year. You can see a slight elevation in values as we creep up towards solar max in the early 2000s, coming back down after. At the same time that earthquakes around the world, big ones began to pick up and the ocean temperature anomaly began, that's around 2006, we began to see a degradation of the normal protective layer, an over-ionization that kind of blows away what we saw at last solar max. We are juiced up, folks, and that likely contributes to nearly all the earth changes we're witnessing. That's the news, folks. Be safe.